Hey, it's Tyler TJX Survival. I'm here with Richard from CampingYurts.com. He's going to kind of come over the building of yurts, kind of the story behind the company, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So stick with us. Yurts are cool, God, you put me on the spot here. So yurts are cool because, well, they're round. Uh, they're a magical space once you've been inside it. Um, they're an extremely old structure and they're, they're beautiful. The difference between me and other companies, most, most yurt companies in America are for permanent yurts, ones you live in, which is really the sort of Western uh, style of a yurt, whereas mine are for camping. They're the ones you take with you, you, uh, you set them up in 40 minutes and then you, you take them down, you travel with them. So they're lightweight and portable. They're not really for living in, um, people do, but uh, they're primarily for, for, for camping and, and uh, you know, short stays and things like that. Sometimes I don't want to say. I have no idea what he just said. How old are you? They are my other daughter who just has paresis on her head anymore. And then, um, yeah. And if she does, I will just be the crap out of her. What? I don't know. She has any more? If she has any more. She has to be. My body. No, I'm. She has that. I'm doing something terribly wrong. I don't know what it is. So this last time she was intravenous bed for three months her oh spit god. made her throw up oh my god so yeah she can't she have it anymore to... she can't have it anymore i hope she figured it out with what's up guys yes, my, name hey, puppy. <laughs> my name's tucker tucker what's up dude that's finn tucker's like pets you're tucker yeah and the puppy's finn yeah. gotcha Yeah. Yeah. Are you making a video of the yurts? Sorry? Are you making a video of the yurts? Of the yurts, yeah. And the puppy. Everybody likes puppies. And oh, puppy. Yeah. See you guys. So we're here at Rabbit Stick, checking out some yurts. I've got Richard from Camping Yurts. I want to say your tents that was totally wrong campingyurts.com <laughs> and um he's gonna talk to us a little bit about the yurts uh maybe a little bit of the history how'd you get into making these things well i made a yurt to go camping on the coast with my kids in oregon and uh we would we built it we went camping and whenever we set up anywhere we'd get a crowd watching us set it up and then uh, uh people wanted to see inside it so we thought well maybe there's a business in this so we we um um, just threw up a website and uh, and then started making yurts and then it just grew and grew and grew and now now we're full time on this. I've raised my family on it and it's been it's been great. So I know some of the traditional yurts yep. they'll get sticks they'll put a hole in it tie strings together and then they can replace it and kind of kind of repair it. I also know that I tried to make a yurt and failed miserably. I uh, stripped two befores, um, drilled holes couldn't source uh, the, the canvas. This canvas I did source was not wide enough. I couldn't find a machine to sell it. It's not like you just go whip this thing up. Right. Right. Yeah. So I do have questions about how you created the lattice. How are you creating the vertical poles? So the lattice is like I started the same way. I ripped two by fours, but the trouble with two by fours is, is from Lowe's and Home Depot is you've got knots and you've got uh, you know the wood's not straight it twists it's not very springy either it is it will this is dug fur which yeah. is what i use dug fur straight grain dug fur it's clear um but you waste so much wood if you buy construction lumber so if you were going to build it yourself you would the minimum quality you use would be select structural mm -hmm. if you can get clear great but it's going to cost you more but in the end 
you're spending less because you're not wasting so much. You've got to avoid knots. You can't have a knot in you this lattice. To, you, you, you're break. almost losing an entire strip every time you cut it. Yeah, and if there's if there's a knot, even you know, a dime size in here, it'll break. Roof, you know, the, the roof poles can handle knots, but um, much better. So, yeah. So the basic elements of it. There are four basic elements. You've got the lattice. There's there's two um, two wall sections. Then you have uh, the roof poles and you have the ring obviously in the middle and then you have the door frame. And that's pretty much it in the canvas, obviously the roof and the wall and the door. But that, that's pretty much it. It's it's very simple structure. So I had a teepee. Uh, the teepee I want to say was a 14 to 20 foot somewhat wood, tall, tall teepee. So, so it had 20 to 25 foot poles that I got to drive around with. Right. right I, packing them was crazy. I needed to either get special brackets to go on top of a vehicle or a big giant trailer. Um, also a teepee, you have all this, there's tons of space above you that your heat escapes into. Right. It's okay with some smoke, but irrelevant if you have a, if you have a stove or a fireplace. And you have more space out there that you have to heat up that you can't use because you're not going to like. Right. The usable, I mean, I love teepee. Yeah. I love teepees. I have a couple myself. Yeah. But this is way more practical. It packs down really small. Yes. The longest piece of wood in this yurt, which is a 12 foot, is only six foot. It's, I can it's put the, that on my car. Right, it's six yeah. foot with the with the pole, and these, when they're concertinaed together, are six foot. So all of that can go on the roof of the car. It's not and then I'm, I'm spending less fuel burning to heat a smaller, more usable right. space. Right. And it's it's just more efficient. It's more well, effective. I mean, you think about yeah. the usable space. Yeah. If you you know the, the the teepee goes down at an angle, you can't use that space around the sides. You have to yeah. use that for uh, you know your gear, obviously. But if you have a fire in the middle, what space have you got left? Very yeah. Little. You got your fire, and you can put a, you can put a fire in here too. You could. You know, I would definitely prefer a fireplace or a stove. Right, and maybe a, maybe a chimney going out in the middle. It's going to yeah. be far better. You're not going to get smoky uh, canvas that way. I know in Mongolia they'll they'll yeah. have a substantially larger. Now your the angle that you have the roof is a little steeper than I've seen on some others. Mongolian yurts traditionally are very shallow. I think that's to do with you know wind resistance. But yeah, because I was gonna, I was going to assume because I know that they the wind wind is a massive issue, but yes. snow isn't as much of an issue because the wind's just blowing it off. Right. Are you are you doing this higher pitch for space or snow load or? It's just the way it came out. Oh, that's when fair. When I first started, it was like I bought lumber, six foot lumber or twelve foot lumber, and half huh. it or eight foot or ten foot. So that's the size of my yurts. Yeah. You know, six, you know, twelve. But I like it because you can have a shorter lattice that packs easier and still right. have the head space. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. So how are you? How are you making all the, the lattice? How are you building the knots? So. I buy my, now, I don't rip my wood, I buy the wood in from a mill and uh, it comes in with the edges rounded over, same with the lattice, it's rounded over. I drill all the holes, I cut it to length, I dog ear these, I do the tenoning. Literally the whole thing's handmade. Yeah, so the tenoning on the roof up here, so I have to put a tenon so that goes through the ring to hold that. And then there's a rounded end on the back of this pole and then there's a, um, a rope to hold it to the top of the lattice to keep it in place. And so I do all of that, um, yeah, so that, that's how I, I put it together. But I, I make, I, I do, you know, I don't make ones and twos, I'm making like 15 or 20 at a time for the wood. So I'll, I'll have, I buy this in in like 2,000 pieces. So you get it at a better price because you're getting so much it's, of it. It's a numbers game, yeah. yeah. So if you're, a, if you're a home builder, you'll get nowhere near the prices that I get, but you know, that, that's the problem. You, it's just m mills don't want to deal with you because you're you're doing with such smaller numbers. Their setup time, it's just not worth it for them. So they they want they want to uh, sell a lot of it. So I buy a lot of wood and I buy a year's worth of wood in one go and then I spend you know the year making everything. And then you end up saving. Okay. Um. What do people who, what do people need to know about yurts that they don't? They're cool. They're a magic space. So they're cool temperature? They're yes, clearly cool. They I mean, are, they are. There's something so, awesome about so, a circular tent. Yeah, well any tent is going to get hot. But the reason a yurt doesn't get hot is because you've got a bloody great big hole in the middle. So This is burping the heat out. And yeah. right now I do feel, I mean, I, We're in direct I hadn't sunlight. thought about it. Yeah, yeah. so all out the heat's going out hotter. there. And if you, want, if you yeah. want it to be cooler, all you've got to do is just raise the side of the, 
the canvas, hold it up. So cool air is always at the lowest point. So cool air is coming in here. So it's and literally going to vacuum it and push and the it heat out. And it goes straight out the top. So it's cool. So and how, it, how do you deal with rain then? So I use an umbrella to cover this hole in, in the, in, when it's in raining. But we do have polycarbonate domes that go on the top. So if you're more permanent setting, then you want a, a polycarbonate dome. It's a magic space. I've set up thousands of yurts now, but it doesn't matter how many times you do it. You come in the yurt, you've set it up, and there's there's a, it's, there's a feeling. There's a, there's it's a like sense. a home. And I, I, it's weird. There's a weird feeling. It's a great feeling, but it's, yeah. it's odd. It's always here. It's a round building. There's something about living in the round. There's something about the decoration of the wood. Yeah. Something about it looks like a struck. I don't even know how to say it. It doesn't look like a sheet of of, of canvas. canvas yeah it looks like it looks like a wall it looks like a lattice it looks like something growing i guess i don't know and it's incredibly strong so if you back up there i'm going to jump up and hang on this uh ring and you you would expect the whole thing to sort of sag mm -hmm. right but you watch oh yeah it didn't even move it, it didn't even move i mean i can see that you added pressure to it yeah but nothing happened try this That is cool. <laughs> that is really cool. Just rigid. I, I, I guess it has to do with the way it well, spreads all the way down. The en this is the engineering for it. So you've got this is the tension band. It is the, this is the only real structural element of the whole yurt. Mm -hmm. So the yurt without this band holding this wall around, it would pancake because all the weight's on the roof. This would want to go out with it. So this forces, puts the forces back up towards the ring. So this is integral. But then you think about it, this pole is being supported by two laths that go down to the ground. So we have a triangle, so that's the strongest structure right here. But then these laths are being secured by these, the, this, this triangle, and, then it, and by this triangle. So it's, everything is being held together through triangles all the way around. So it's, it's incredibly strong, but yet it's so portable. And that's the beauty of it really, is, is its portability. So my website is campingyurts.com. So that's camping and yurts, it's just one word. And so I sell yurts, well I've made yurts from five foot all the way up to 25 feet. My normal sizes are eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 20. Um, I sell them at any stage of completion. So you can buy plans from me, uh, you can buy kits from me, you can just buy the roof poles, you could just buy the ring if you wanted to, or just the canvas. So it's for the hobbyist or the person who doesn't want to get into that and just wants to you know, get out there camping. So it, I do everything. I sell everything, should I say. Thank you for watching and uh, leave your comments in the section below. <laughs>